where we stood. They gathered and sang one song, then left it in the corners and beside the chairs, on the tables and under eider downs, on the window ledges and in each other. How could they have known the secrets that live in that space behind the knees? That arms, as they rise, make bones fly, and scars are made of someone else's stories and are seldom the ones you see. That you can kiss the cleft of a baby just to be the first. The skin they touched, bathed skin, brown skin, bruised skin, palms and fingers and painted toes. They heard the questions and asked their own, listened to the whispered fears of a blue boy with stones for lungs. A girl in yellow boots clutched the hand of a seven-year-old boy learning the music of thin reeds and his own simple future. They tasted the exotic in Zanzibar, traveled home to Ithaca to find out who they were, walked with hooded priests through forests lighting the sky on fire over ice flows, over oceans, over high deserts and fragrant prairies, to back alleys, to sacred places, to their forgotten lives and to the ones they held on to. They tasted the exotic in Zanzibar, traveled home to Ithaca to find out who they were, walked with hooded priests through forests, lighting the sky on fire, over ice flows, over oceans, over high deserts and fragrant prairies, to back alleys, to sacred places, to their forgotten lives and to the ones they held on to. Hi, I'm Jude Neal. And I'm Jane Canyon. Uh, and this is our exhibition, Where We Stood, a collaboration of poetry and visual art. So Jude and I have known each other for a very long time, almost 30 years, and we've talked about collaborating for most of those years we've been friends. Um, her poetry is very visual and when someone reads her short poems, they have their own imaginary visions and pictures that go with that. And I never felt that adding visual art was necessary and may just be sort of derivative and trite. So I was always the one that was reluctant to uh, collaborate. But in 2020, uh, we started talking about it again, and Jude, Jude, shortly after, sent me this amazing long poem called Where We Stood, and it just sparked something in me that, that felt like we could collaborate with this poem and, and work through all the conversations and the memories and the journeys that we've shared and talked about over many, many years. So I don't know if you want to talk about how the poem came to be, perhaps? Well, the poem came about uh, from these two lines. They tasted the exotic in Zanzibar, traveled home to Ithaca to find out who they were. Because I wanted to write a journey poem, I couldn't think of anything more exotic than those two places. And I wrote the last page first, and then I wrote the first page next. And um, 
it's just a continuation of some of the places poems go, some of the places children go, some of the places uh, stories go, and, um, and it all fits together and ends with, and they all abandon themselves in the last sweet surprise. And one of the really beautiful things that, that affected me with this poem is that it doesn't tell a single story. And it doesn't tell the whole story. So it, from line to line, the stories vary, but they move into each other. And it felt like um, we have so many journeys in our lives. It doesn't matter whether we travel or not. There's so many journeys that we go through. And that's a bit the way that life felt, that, that things don't necessarily follow through to the end before something else starts. And gets interrupted. And so I was really moved by it and I felt like it, it fit in with some of the work that I was doing. I had recently switched uh, back to fiber art for a period after painting for about 10 years. So this is the first time I've shown fiber in about 10 years. And uh, this body of work is all done with recycled domestic textiles. So this a piece like this is um, done with sheets and there might be a bit of tea towel in there. Uh, I've collected textiles and saved textiles for years and I've saved sheets. I've never thrown a sheet away even when it was worn out. So this just kind of fits in with what I have around the house and things that I've always thought I could do something with but I didn't really have the right venue. Um, so one of the, a lot of the pieces, so first I'll talk about this piece. This is the title piece for the show called Where We Stood. And this piece is done on a large sheet. I always wanted to bring together my two great loves of painting and fiber. Um, but it, it never quite felt like a good fit for me. It always felt like I was trying to figure out how to stitch on paintings or paint on stitching and it never felt really organic and natural until I started doing this work. So all of these pieces are acrylic paint on recycled domestic fiber uh, with stitch on them. So in the beginning I was doing pieces like this where they were collaged on top, fabrics were collaged on top of each other, covered all over with stitching. This one actually has, if you want to just stand back a bit, this one actually has lines from the poem in it uh, because I just started working with the poem and uh, so this one I actually incorporated the writing into the piece. It also has lines from my journal around the edges and hopefully you can't read them. <laughs> this piece is skin number five and it was interesting because as I was, when I was almost finished stitch, stitching it, I turned it over and I found the back more interesting than the front. And this is a common thing that happens for me with fiber art, that the back is more interesting than the front, or is equally interesting. So in the end, I'm showing this one from the back. Um, it's called Skin Series 5 that arms as they rise make bones fly and scars are made of someone else's stories and they're seldom the ones you see. Um, and that, that line of the poem just felt completely related to this piece. It feels more like an animal hide than some of the other pieces, more, um, more animal than human skin. And a few of them do feel like that. They feel like they're more related to animal skin than human skin, but aren't we all the same anyway? Um, a lot, most of the stitching in these pieces is free motion machine embroidery. There is some hand stitching in some of the pieces, but the majority of this is done by machine. This piece is skin series number 10. Um, you can see that it took an awful lot of t-shirt painted t-shirt rags to put together. 
Uh, it was actually in several different formats before it became this format. And as I mentioned before, I love to cut things apart and tear things apart and put them back together. And I think I did that three or four times with this piece before it, it developed this format. Um, there's, there's a beautiful hand to these pieces. If you feel them, and I know you can't feel them through the video, but there's a stability and a softness to them that is, is really nice to feel. So this piece, Skin Series 10, um, could be an animal hide. It could be a worn bed covering that's had bodies sleeping under it. It could be interpreted as a map. Uh, while many of these pieces look begin to look more like the clothing they were made from, this piece has a lot of different interpretations and it's really up to the viewer to use their own imagination, just like the poem, to create the pictures that they see. They tasted the exotic in Zanzibar, traveled home to Ithaca to find out who they were. Thank you.